that. It's a given Thursday, it's the 9 o'clock block here in Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sandy Ma. Uh, she's with Common Cause Hawaii, and she's a, um, a good friend of Think Tech. And she's going to talk about um, redistricting, and she's going to give us an update today about what's going on, because plenty is going on. Welcome to the show, Sandy. Thank you, Jay, for having us. So uh, what, what's the, uh, the core point of the update? You have um, things going on in redistricting. Can you tell us um, what those things are? Yeah, so um, reapportionment and redistricting is uh, actually incredibly important to Hawaii and to the nation. I know it only happens once every 10 years. It happens after the census. So the census is where everyone gets counted. And I think everyone remembers back in 2020, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, news and buzz about fill out your census information so you get counted. So at that time, we let the government know that we are here. Uh, everyone gets counted. Uh, even babies born on April 1 of 2020 get counted. And the reason that it's done is so that we can make sure that um, our communities get the services that are needed. And so after every person gets counted, and that's uh, required in the US Constitution on uh, the next year, it's reapportionment. And that is uh, when um, the people get allocated uh, uh, by state, and we know how many people are living in each state for the US representatives uh, in the House. And so that's uh, vitally important to representation in Congress. Uh, we have found out that some large states, such as California and New York, lost people. People have migrated out of those states and they are going to lose some representatives in Congress. And some states, uh, such as Texas, have gained representatives. Um, and so that shifts the balance of power. If you are a Democrat or a Republican, you're thinking, well, wow, those states are going to gain seats. Hawaii, we have, um, are going to keep our two House representatives. So that's reapportionment. And we are lucky we're keeping our two because we have uh, heard a lot of news about how there's this brain drain and people are moving to the mainland because it's so expensive to live in Hawaii. But Hawaii's actually gained seats, uh, excuse me, not seats, but gained population based off the census um, in 2020. We've gained um, you know, population, so that's good. So that's reapportionment on the federal level. Well, let me, on, let me uh, talk to you about what you've said so far. Um, so you have a census every 10 years, um, and uh, the, the federal census takers go around and they take numbers and they knock on your door and say how many people in the house and blah. And they may ask, uh, you know, survey questions too, but the bottom line is uh, how many people in the house? And um, okay, and then, and then you take a map and you say, hmm, there's a district there, and we know that X people live in the district. Okay, and, and we're going to fill in the whole state by these districts. Uh, we're going to send that information to Washington, um, sort of like a second census, if you will. Oh, that's the first census. And then that map, based on the first census, um, goes to Washington also. And that, and that will uh, affect the, you know, what you call it, distribution of resources and benefits and so forth from various programs in Washington. Mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't sound like rocket science to me. If you have a district, call it Moile Ili. If you have a district, Moile Ili, you know the boundaries. You walk, you walk the district. You you know, you you take the numbers. You put them on a map. You send the map, you know, to Washington. What's so complicated? Well, actually, the district boundaries are drawn here in Hawaii, and that's the that's the second part. The first part is counting of the people. Um, and then the second part is drawing the lines. And that's what's going on right now. Right now we are drawing the lines and that's what's really incredibly important to, to local Hawaii and what we are doing here. Because when we draw the lines, um, we determine who we could elect to office for the next 10 years, because this is only done once every 10 years. And so we draw the lines uh, for how we vote for our two federal representatives, how we vote for every uh, state elected people 
uh, to our state legislature, all 76. Uh, we draw the lines for our Honolulu City Council, all nine of them, and we draw the lines for our nine Hawaii County Council members. Um, Maui does not draw lines. I mean, we have council districts, but uh, we're not gonna redraw them because everyone can vote for all nine council members and that's the same for Kauai County. Uh, so redrawing those lines based on population shifts where we have seen uh, taken by the 2020 census is incredibly important. For example- oh, but, but you mentioned that Kauai and Maui, uh, everybody's at large and it's just one mm -hmm. district. Um, that sounds very equitable to me and it, it avoids the need to redraw or reapportion. Why don't we do that in every county? Well, um, some may say that is equitable and other people may say that's not quite fair. Why should someone in Hana uh, who lives in Hana be able to vote for the uh, representative on Molokai? Shouldn't it be people on Molokai voting for people on Molokai to represent from Molokai um, and vice versa? And so, um, so that is the reason why. And right now the Maui Charter Commission is uh, actually deciding that issue uh, to, to actually draw lines so that when you live in that district, you vote for your people in that district inst instead of having someone uh, vote uh, for your representative. Um, the division um, there would be between um, the two islands, I guess, Maui and Molokai, but not, not carving up Maui or Molokai. Yes, it is actually creating districts, voting districts. Yeah. The Maui, so, uh, okay, the voting Charter districts. Commission. You said we, we um, make the maps, remake the maps um, based on, I guess it's population, I guess. Um, what, what is it based on and who is we? Is it you? Is it me? Is it some government official? Um, is it federal? Is it state? Um, who are they? So, so the state has a reapportionment commission that's made up of nine members. Um, it's uh, there are eight members appointed by the legislature. So two from the Senate president, two from the Speaker of the House, uh, uh, two from opposite members uh, from the party of the uh, opposite party of the Speaker, two from the opposite party of the uh, House. Uh, excuse me, two from the opposite party of the president of the Senate. And then those eight people uh, select a ninth member. Um, and so there is a, a nine member state reapportionment commission and they get together and they draw maps uh, and they draw uh, the, the federal uh, lines, which are just two lines because we just have two um, uh, representatives. And then they draw 76 uh, lines for, for us. Uh, for the uh, 76 representatives at the state legislature, 25 in the Senate, uh, 51 in the House. In 2022, which is just next year, uh, our federal congressional uh, representatives are up for election and all 76 state House members are up for um, election also. Mm -hmm. So what, what standards and, do they use when they draw? Um, because the standards could have a big effect on uh, voting districts and on resources. So um, there are federal uh, standards um, in the U.S. Constitution. It is one person, one vote. So all the districts lines that are drawn should be equal, uh, basically. It should be one person, one vote. It should be equal, except for the fact that it is really hard. If you live in one district, it is very hard to have equal districts. Um, so. Uh, there could be deviations, uh, a percentage deviation. Uh, also, the line should be contiguous. Um, uh, they should follow uh, natural geographic features. Um, they should follow census blocks. Um, so there are rules in our constitution, federal and state constitution. They should not um, uh, be drawn to favor one political uh, party or um, a, a an elected official. There are rules. Um, when I say who but draws these, these, are, these are not absolute rules. And, no, and they are subject to interpretation by, by the, the committee, so to speak, the commission. Yeah. Right? Yes. 
So the commission is actually meeting uh, today is Thursday, September days. <laughs> lose time when it's COVID. Today's the ninth. Today's the ninth. Today's the ninth. So the uh, state commission is meeting today at one o'clock and they already have proposed federal lines drawn. And so there are they're going to be showing these lines to the public. And when I say who should be drawing these lines, and I always say we, I think it's the people. The people should have a say because when lines are drawn, it determines who we can elect to office. And so that's why I say it's we. And we should say that the process for drawing the lines should be open and transparent, and we should be able to have a say in the process. And we should also be able to view the lines and question how the lines were drawn. We should be able to submit our own proposed maps. So that's why I say it's us, we the people. Because mm -hmm. in Hawaii, um, a slight, deviation um, by meter blocks can result in major changes. Yeah, so it sounds pretty sensitive. So do, do people actually come down? What kind of person comes down? And if I come down because I care about this and I care about mm, preserving voting rights and democracy, uh, I think we should be very sensitive to that, especially now. Um, th then, um, and, and I come with an alternative map and I come with my arguments and my analysis, whatever it may be, and we're going to listen to me. Uh, are they going to accept my, my view of it? Uh, what chance do I have of being heard, really heard? Well, in the 2021, excuse me, 2011 um, reapportionment redistricting cycle, uh, about 200 maps were submitted by the public uh, for um, commission review. Uh, there is a public hearing phase when maps are presented by the commission. The commission has to present it for public hearing. Uh, and so at that time, um, you could comment, the public could comment on these maps and say, this splits my community. Uh, for example, if, I have an, if I'm Native Hawaiian and my Native Hawaiian community is split so that I cannot form a voting block, um, that I cannot um, vote my interests, and my interests cannot be heard, um, it is definitely the time to speak up and say, why did my community get split? I think a better map would be this map that I am presenting to you. And at that time, definitely it should be submitted. And I have heard from 2011 that maps have been um, revised to, uh, to represent community interests, uh, to uh, take into community concerns. So yes, well, you could just say the Native Hawaiians uh, may have a community that stretches into two mm, portions of the map, but you know what about um, what about Democrats and Republicans because they could make an argument that sounds like that. And I, I want to take a moment and just um, connect up, if I could, some of the some of the politics that have played here. In the, in the last census, uh, we had some very strange things going on in Washington about um, people with immigration status and they had to answer a question in the census and, and some uh, people whose uh, immigration status may not have been perfected uh, were intimidated and were predictably intimidated and, and didn't participate. And that affected uh, the, the, the accuracy of the, of the census. Also, uh, Donald Trump cut the census off a month or two before it was supposed to be cut off. Uh, I guess he felt that would somehow help him or the Republican Party um, in the count because people weren't being counted at the end and, and, and they lost a month or two because of that particular maneuver. That's, and that's on the um, census side. And, and on, the, um, uh, on the redistricting side, you know, where you say redistricting, reapportionment is pretty much the same thing. And then, you know, you cross a little line, you get to gerrymandering. Uh, which we had in the Trump administration, and maybe before that. I mean, gerrymandering is is from a, a fellow named Jerry back in the 19th century, <laughs> who, yeah. who who twisted these maps around and and they named it after him. If I, if it was me, I wouldn't really appreciate having that named after me. Nobody nobody should call it gerrymandering. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so that gerrymandering is a negative. Uh, gerrymandering is still possible. I recall uh, the Lingle administration put a lot, Republican, right, put a lot of time and effort into redistricting. She had a whole team going to try to redistrict. And it was clearly for political purposes to advance 
the Republican community. Uh, and finally, I'll stop in a minute. Finally, you mentioned uh, this opposite opposite party thing. Um, we really have 99% uh, Democratic Party in the state. So when you say the opposite party of the Democrats, that means the Republicans. The Republicans are overweighted in this commission, overweighted, clearly. Um, and you know they're going to be looking for their own interests. They're very sensitive as a as a political party to um, you know reapportionment and for that matter gerrymandering. How do we keep gerrymandering out of this equation? So um, let's talk about the census first of all. Uh, there were a lot of Supreme Court um, cases filed regarding um, uh, having everyone counted all people. Uh, the word is people in the Constitution, not citizens, and so. Um, in the end, the citizenship question was not on uh, the census. So all people are counted. Uh, You'll in agree the with me, Sandy, that did not affect the, the quality of intimidation for the average person who had concerns about his or her citizenship or immigration status. They, you know, that, that Supreme Court case is not going to alleviate their level of concern very much. No? Yes. So there, there definitely was um, tensions in the immigrant com community regarding the census. So um, I don't disagree with you on that, Jay. Um, but uh, in the end, um, the people who were on the ground conducting the census, and there were a lot of uh, foreign language speakers conducting the census. There were a lot of nonprofit um, uh, communities, excuse me, nonprofit organizations um, engaging in communities to talk about um, the accuracy of the census and the need for everyone to be counted. And so while um, trepidations were there, uh, we hope that everyone did get counted. All people did get counted. And um, so, um, so that's one part of the census question. Another part, are the people who uh, worked in the US Census Bureau who actually uh, crunched the data and um, Common Cause's position is that they are fine individuals and they worked um, um, diligently and produced uh, good accurate data that we are going to rely on for reapportionment and redistricting. Um, uh, we trust in their work. Uh, um, and so uh, this data is, um, uh, we, we haven't seen any evidence that this data is, is tainted um, given the last uh, administration. I, I would agree from my observation. We had a number of census takers uh, on our shows during the course of the census and uh, your description of them as individuals, uh, you know, uh, is, is consistent with the kind of people who showed up to talk about it. Um, and so for reapportionment and redistricting, um, so reapportionment is the reallocation of the numbers uh, so that uh, with, within the districts and redistricting is, is the line drawing that, that's going on here. And as for um, having the Republican um, balance on the reapportionment commission, um, we like to see uh, everyone represented. And we have been fielding some questions about, well, what about um, libertarian parties? What about uh, Aloha Aina uh, or Green Party? Or what about, you know, independents? Why are they not represented on a reapportionment commission? And, you know, that is true. Uh, perhaps we should have an independent citizen um, redistricting commission instead. Uh, why just two parties? Um, and Per your comment, it really, why should Republicans have four seats when it's really a democratic uh, state? But it should be the people drawing the lines because it really represents, we, sh we should dictate who we get to represent versus Republicans and Democrats drawing the lines uh, uh, so that only uh, Republicans and Democrats get elected in the long run. Well, sure. I mean, you know, it's a natural, a natural uh, inclination. If I'm, a, say, a Republican on that commission, and I'm involved in the the uh, original draft, so to speak, of the of the of the map, I'm going to favor 
um, an interpretation, a, a geographical interpretation uh, that will get me more votes, more resources for my, you know, which was the case back 10 years and 20 years ago. And I would say it's still the case, perhaps increasingly so. Republican Party is a national experience and, and part of its um, visible agenda is to try to control reapportionment mm -hmm. and for that matter, try to gerrymander. So uh, you have to assume that, you have to assume that. Uh, so what controls do we have on that when they come in and um, participate in map drawing that favors them? Well, it, it is, like I said, a balanced process of four and four with uh, one um, person agreed upon by, by all the eight other members for the State Reapportionment Commission. And people need to become uh, involved in the process because this process decides who we get to vote for for the next 10 years and what resources are allocated to our community. And we should be able to vote for people who adequately represents our community and who knows our community. And so um, while there are guardrails in our state constitution, in the federal constitution and um, in the Voting Rights Act, as you have said, uh, they could be circumvented like we have seen with gerrymandering on the mainland, which we don't see that. We don't really see that here in Hawaii, but people really need to testify before the reapportionment commission at the state level and at the county levels to the, the two counties, Honolulu and Hawaii County, um, to, to say, we are watching you. We want transparency in the process and we are ready to submit our own maps uh, to show how the lines could be drawn that adequately reflect our community, not some uh, political party. Good, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. Um, <clears throat> so um, Common Cause, Common Cause is a wonderful organization. It's a, it's a bulwark of our national democracy, so important these days, uh, more important now perhaps than ever. And, and uh, query, why, why and to what extent are you involved in this process? Are you drawing maps? Are you looking at maps? Are you commenting on maps? Are you down there? Would you be down there today? Uh, what does Common Cause do about this? Oh, thank you for that question. And thank you for um, uh, stating what our organization is. We are um, trying to um, alert the people as to the importance of reapportionment and redistricting and how it impacts us for the next 10 years. You know, something that happens only once every 10 years, we kind of forget about it. <laughs> That's only natural. I forget about things that happened yesterday. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so this is highly important. Um, and then kind of, kind of wonky and, and difficult to comprehend at times. And, and we want people to know about this process. And while, um, with COVID kind of, um, you know, uh, impacting all of our lives, these meetings are all held on Zoom. And so we have been advocating for transparency in the process with, the, with all the commissions, stating that, uh, you know, they need to publicize these meetings. They need to make uh, public testimony more easily accessible, um, allow the public to testify after each agenda item to have their, um, board materials or commission materials um, available earlier in the process uh, so that we have time to review them. Um, we held a, a recent uh, training just the other day um, for our members and for the public about why redistricting is important and what they could do about it, how they could testify and what they should testify about, which is their community and how their community could be Im impacted. Uh, we will soon be having another training on how to draw maps. Um, what Common Cause is doing is we're not going to draw maps for the community because I don't represent, our organization does not represent the entire community. I could draw maps for the, my community that I live in, but I cannot draw a map for Hilo community or um, Lahaina community because I don't live there. It has to come from the community. And so that's why um, the com community has to get involved. Um, so you're interested in the process. You want to make sure the process is, um, you know, hygienically clean um, and that people are heard and that um, the rules are being followed, that the maps are being are fair 
uh, and there is no uh, sign of gerrymandering or inappropriate reapportionment. Um, suppose, Sandy, and, and that's appropriate, and it's good that you're the watchdog on, on that. Somebody needs to be, somebody not government needs to be. But suppose, Sandy, just hypothetically, you find that something is awry. Uh, something is wrong in Mudville. What happens? What do you do? Well, you know, we are prepared to litigate. You know, if, if something is truly wrong with the process, if uh, people are shut out of the proceedings, um, then, then we will, you know, litigate. We, we have the resources um, to litigate. We will litigate. For example, our sister um, organization in Illinois, uh, the Illinois Redistricting Commission over there uh, created maps even before the census data was released. They created maps from the American Community Survey data, which is not the census data. You create maps from the census data. And so they're going to litigate over that. Good. That's right. I mean, yeah. we can, you know, we've had enough, um, you know, enough um, corrosion, if you will, on our democracy over the past few years. We can't afford anything that corrodes uh, voting rights. Um, and you, you mentioned the Voting Rights Act, that you're governed uh, at least in part by the Voting Rights Act. What Voting Rights Act are you talking about? Because there are two of them pending in Congress that haven't passed. Which one, which one governs here? Uh, so this is the existing Voting Rights Act Section 2, which says, says that if there are minority, uh, majority minority districts that could be created, then we should look closely as to uh, if they should be created. And there are very specific criteria if uh, minority majority districts could be created and they are a uh, predominant voting block, um, then they should be created if they vote uh, in a similar pattern and they are the predominant voting block, um, then we, we uh, have to look closely at it. That raises an interesting question. I suppose uh -huh. I come in either as a Native Hawaiian group that claims to be divided by the map or, or some other group that has trouble with a map and wants to supplant another map. Um, <clears throat> um, now, it, it seems to me relevant to that would be historically how the people in that district uh, around that line have voted in the yes. past. Do you, does, does the commission consider historical voting data also? We have to, yes, because if they uh, vote, if they have voting patterns uh, that are similar and they could form a voting block, that would, uh, you know, be the predominant voting pattern and voting block that overrides other uh, groups in that area. Then we, they have to take a close look at why um, the district lines have split them. Ah, really and, interesting. Yeah, and we have. Um, I have asked our Common Cause National Demographer to map Native Hawaiian voters, and there are. Um, appears to be some splitting of Native Hawaiian voters on the Big Island. And so, I mean, I'm not saying that that was done intentionally uh, with an eye towards splitting the vote of Native Hawaiian voters. I'm not saying that at all because there are a lot of factors that go into line drawing, such as following geographical features, one person, one vote, um, you know, following census blocks, which, you know, are 300 to 600, you know, people per census block. There's a lot of factors in it. Um, but, you know, you look at that, if I was, if I lived in that area in Hilo, and I um, am a Native Hawaiian voter, um, Native Hawaiian activist, I would say, is there any way I could draw a line now for 2021 that would, you know, uh, capture my Native Hawaiian community uh, versus splitting it between three different districts. And so that's something to consider. And I hope that uh, this commission will take a look at that. Well, the um, motion on the table would be, we're gonna, we're gonna change the line. We're gonna move the line here, here or there to make it in our view more, more equitable. But query, suppose uh, you say nine members of the commission, for example, um, you had a five to four split or a one to eight or whatever it is, you could have a disagreement in the voting, just like in the Supreme Court. Um, how, you know, and the, and the majority would win. Is that what happens? Yes. So they present a map to the public for public comment. And then um, that's the draft, draft map for public comment. Then it comes back after public comment to see what the public comments are, like rulemaking, right? 
and then it gets adopted. And then the, that's the final map uh, for the next okay. 10 years. 10 years. So uh, you said there was a meeting today. Um, where does it go from here? I suppose there are other meetings in other places, and, and yes. then there are meetings of the commission. How long does it take, and what what else can we expect to see along the road uh, to completion? So this is a really big meeting of the state reapportionment commission. This meeting, uh, they're going to decide on extraction of military and uh, non-permanent resident military and students. Hawaii is the only state for reapportionment and redistricting that we don't count everyone. For census, we count everyone. And then for our reapportionment and redistricting, we extract out non-permanent resident military and students. And that's under our state constitution. And if you think about it, on Oahu, we have a lot of military bases um, and we have our largest, uh, you know, um, learning institutions, higher learning institutions. And when you extract out uh, people, that reduces our count. And if you reduce those counts enough, it could give uh, neighbor islands um, extra house, uh, extra state house and Senate seats and shifts power to neighbor islands. Yeah, well, you know, students may come and go. But they, to the extent a student leaves, another one will come in. So if you're looking at uh, the demographics of it, it may be more constant uh, than just excluding students. The same thing with military. If I have, uh, I don't know, say 100,000 military on the island and I exclude them, uh, it doesn't seem quite right because those, those people will be rotated out, but there'll be another 100,000 in. So the number is fairly constant. To exclude them all doesn't sound equitable, no? So um, extraction, so the apportionment data um, is as of April 1, 2020, which is the census data. So it's it's extracting people um, who've declared another state as their permanent residence. And that's what they've declared as of the census date of April 1, 2020. Hmm. And so, so it's, kind of a, a interesting uh, analysis. Yeah, well, interesting. Maybe, maybe it, it raises the last question I was gonna ask you, Sandy, uh, and that is this, um, you know, in a democracy, the, the thing that democracy should allow, um, and I think the founding fathers were onto this, is that society changes. Um, you know, voters change, voting districts change, it all changes. And, and they were pretty farsighted to, to, um, to realize that those changes should be reflected in the, in the apportionment. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's credit to them, but it's also credit to the people who were involved, including you, uh, that you, that you recognize, that you deal with, you analyze the changes. We need to change with the times. And that suggests to me the possibility that maybe the state legislature from time to time would tune this whole thing up and have a bill here or there on some part of the process in order to you know, recognize changes, improve the system, what have you. Are there bills? Should there be bills that tune this up? So yeah, so that's, that's a, um, a really interesting uh, question you just raised because um, as, as you mentioned before, um, reapportionment redistricting is fraught with politi political considerations and, uh, you know, Republican, Democratic, uh, uh, you know, uh, conflict, if, if you may. And so in this past 2021 legislative session, there were, uh, there was a bill introduced and, and was signed into law about uh, about this process, current process that we're going through. And it actually shifted um, the date of um, when people need to file uh, to run for office because the census data uh, was released so late. So sometimes that little type of fine tuning um, to allow people to run for office can be beneficial because the census data was so late, um, but also was controversial 
been part of the bill because um, they try to uh, change um, how uh, non-permanent residence was defined. And that is, um, there was a Supreme Court decision on it, Solomon versus Abercrombie, and it's in our Hawaii state constitution. So um, there were some issues around there. So uh, yes, so, so there are issues. Uh, people on the neighbor islands like the extraction because um, then power is not so concentrated on Oahu. And so yes, it, it is fraught with uh, political implications, yes. Yeah, well, that's the American system, I suppose. And if the legislature does something that's, um, you know, unfair or favors one party or another, more likely, um, you always have uh, the argument that takes place in the legislature itself. You have the possibility of a veto. You have the possibility of litigation um, on state or federal constitutional grounds. So yeah. this is part of our process. I don't think we realize that it's part of our process. It does have a direct effect. I'm only happy, Sandy, and I'm sure you are too, that some of those states on the mainland where we have really uh, Looney Tunes legislation going on on voter rights, and I presume on gerrymandering too, um, you know, that they're there and we're not like them. I am so happy about that. Hawaii still <laughs> has a, a democratic, may, may I say democratic with a, the notion of democracy, a, a democratic backbone. And uh, we we are essentially fair. Would you agree? Um, I hope so. Um, I, I like to see more people um, testifying on reapportionment and representing their community and stating why it's important to keep their community together or how maps could be changed to be to better represent their community. I think that's necessary. Um, our community certainly has changed a lot. Uh, on Oahu, uh, Kapolei has grown tremendously. Uh, West Side, it's just you know. Yeah, and they should be represented so too. So if yes. I wanted to know more about this, more about the status uh, of the meetings, more about the maps, uh, more about the you know, ultimate decisions here and how they affect me, where do I look? Do I, do I go to commoncause.org or what? Uh, you could just Google Common Cause Hawaii, uh, our slideshow about uh, um, the reapportionment and redistricting process is up on our uh, website. Um, uh, you can follow us online um, uh, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, our slide deck for reapportionment is up there. Um, you can also look uh, at the state elections website. Uh, it's the Office of Elections, um, State Office of Elections has, uh, you can sign up and get notices there on um, reapportionment, on the state reapportionment process. Yeah. Common cause, common cause, Hawaii, democracy's godmother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jay. <laughs> thank you so much, Sandy. Sandy Ma, common cause, Hawaii. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you.